Not the best season on paper. Global. Not the season that they were looking for. Didn't really achieve what we set out to do this year. If we don't do well enough to make it to playoffs, the year will feel like a failure. You practice so much as a team, you spend so much time with each other and stuff, and this is the result you get. I mean, no one's going to be happy with it, you know? You know, pressure gets to you, of course it does. As coaches, we want to shoulder as much as we can so that the players don't feel it. Everybody hates me, everybody hates spin. Uh, we would take that every day over them hating on the players. I want them to be free and loose and feel like they can play. You know, you see the team playing day in, day out. You see the coaches working on fixing issues day in, day out. Nobody wants to lose, right? Like everybody we hear sacrificing their relationship with girlfriend, far from families and stuff like that is just to win. At some point, my mental just gave up, basically. And I think I started to show way too many emotions, but I just had to trust myself and push myself. Like, I cannot be at the lowest. There were some ups and downs throughout the block, but towards the end, we really were starting to hit our stride. That's where we were playing the best Valorant we have all year. Outside of the game, I feel like we didn't really change a lot. Like, we went for this retreat to like a water park. Pull up and the lies on us. Electrifying everything we touch. Ooh. Charge life level up. Why do you mean you, you didn't scrim for two days because you were away having fun? No, it's like those moments like that are really, really important to get everybody to come together, to get everybody to want to play for each other. Feeling like a home when you're playing and practicing with each other is one of the most important feelings. So this is something we did to bond better and have a mental reset. Everybody had trust in me. So I feel like I could always call whatever I wanted and they would listen to me and not like have any doubts or anything. And it was the same way that I trusted them also when they made a call. I think the discourse around this team started off as the team's shit, there's no firepower, or the hell are these players ever going to win a game? Will G win any games this year? All of that sort of stuff. And now the discourse is mostly, imagine if this great group of players had better coaches than this dog shit idiot, right? So. If you think about how the discourse has changed, it's changed from the players being a problem to now the players are good. So realistically, it means that the, you know the growth has been good across the year. Fist bump, yeah. Yep. Yeah, let's, let's go, go. Let's go boys. Let's Give your fucking game. best, boys. Before the team secret game, I never thought that we could win. I would have bet money on it if I could. I mean, I'm not bet money on it, but <laughs> we thought we were going to win that game. We're so sure of it. Yeah, he's adding. Ten. What is it? Two is bullets. Ah, oh, oh, nice fuck. Right. Communication got a bit like panicky also. Everybody was more nervous. Under one. One under, don't one be, gen. Don't be, don't be under. No, he can't get two. Oh, man. Bad. Bad. That's how the game went. We got rolled. We got rolled that game. Good. Oh, oh so he was, was so close. So close, man. Personally, I felt like I failed the team as the IGO after that match. Because I had no answer for like what they were doing, you know. So it's like one of the worst feelings you can have as a IGO, like not knowing what to do. That that was that was killed me a little bit inside. That was that was a hard one to to stomach for sure. I didn't sleep that night. I um, just stayed up. I walked around for a while. I actually came to the office at like you know, like four thirty in the morning. So we knew that immediately the road got a lot harder, and I knew what that meant for me, myself, my career as well as the team. We fixed a lot of, or we tried to fix a lot of issues we faced throughout the season. We didn't put our best foot forward when it mattered the most. The major issue that we had in terms of communication was we needed to build a clear picture for everyone in the team, so everyone understood what was happening at all times. And when that happened, it became very easy for players to focus on their crosshair and play well. When we went against the lead, then it was a whole different story, basically. No, I'm waterfall. They have a result. Care yeah. coming off water or not? Yeah, I smoke here. I smoke here. Smoke here. I'll see you guys. Good out, guys. Smoke Nova instead. Smoke Nova. Nova. Okay. Nice, brother. I'm only left call. Power up. Nice call, nice. Povey. Nice. Yes! Nice, nice. Yes! Nice, boys. Let's go, boys. Nice. The team is at its best when it's communicating well. We wanted to streamline the communication as much as we could, make it as clear as we could, and knowing that if we communicated well, the rest would kind of follow. That was our biggest focus. Let me join. I'm joining. Oh. Up, up. Get a CT. Close right, close right. I'm not some default to me. Pick him, ready? Yep. Three, two, one. I think as a team we have a very high ceiling. Our best Valorant is very, very good. As a coach, I've seen that a lot from the players, but I think our, our other problem was our floor, like our baseline level of Valorant was quite bad. I think it was a tough season. I think from my perspective, the main things we struggled 
with was you know our composure especially on stage I mean obviously you can feel the pressure and see the pressure on all of us when the comms are getting super hectic and stuff when the pressure is on when like the games are close or you know it's like a must win game you, you're just you're heightened not physically I've always been five six but uh, <laughs> your emotions are heightened everything is more intense you can tend to be so focused really you have to be honest with ourselves and just say the pull hubbard you know everyone just relax take a deep breath and breathe a little bit you know Yes, Come on, Come on. Hold up. Hold up. Two, two. No! No! Yes! Let's fucking go. That's the round we needed. Yeah, these games just kind of go crazy and people have their standout rounds and things change very quickly. I think it was a kind of momentum breaker. I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, everybody at almost any level of Valorant knows how to win a 1v4 in that situation. And then we know like where the enemy is like you know, someone is gonna jump, something like that. Probably Golu, but Golu didn't do it. There is a lot of comps that we can do, but we didn't do it, somehow. In scrims, we win that round every single time. Every single time, because there's no pressure. Oh, oh my god! Oh! And, oh no, guys, sorry guys, I was just playing. Relax, guys. relax, relax, next round. That was the first time I felt like I just put my hands on my head, you know what I mean? I could not believe it, kind of thing. Like we just lost that. I think that was the only time throughout the whole season I felt like, damn. I felt responsible for us not being in the playoffs to some extent. And I, I was almost about to cry, but I, I'm glad that there were people that I could hug at that point and not cry and not let my emotions out even more. After we lost against T1, the moves were just gone. But I think I'm, I was way too emotional. It was, it was a, a sad position to be in. You know? We knew that we were capable of better and we hadn't achieved the results we wanted, despite having performed the best we ever have in scrims. So I think it was just a collective disappointment, to be honest. And then we have like uh, three days of practice and then it just went down, you know, like we didn't win a single scrim at all. There is no soul anymore inside the team. During the Genji game, I think, to be honest, that the team had had enough. Players are very tired, and when they didn't ostensibly have anything to fight for, the way we lost was, was disappointing. We were never even in the game, really, at any point. Ooh. What the Ooh. fuck? Nice. There was a turret! You just shot the turret. Oh, come on, yeah. come on, wake up a bit. The drive is not there anymore, or whatever, since we're already out. I wouldn't blame anyone for that, you know what I mean? Like, just felt like a whole different team all of a sudden. I felt lost, and to some extent, I just didn't want to wake up. The next day, because obviously there's nothing to look forward to anymore. This season meant everything to us. We didn't really achieve what we set out to do this year. The biggest thing is like I'm very sorry that we couldn't bring wins. Like obviously, I wish I could. I wish I could have done it. If I could snap my fingers and get wins, I would have done that every single day. But I can't. Just know everybody worked really hard. This isn't this isn't failure from lack of effort. I mean, I will obviously remember my times in here, like the good ones and the bad ones, of course. Everyone's just laughing and having a great time like, with each other. Like, I think everyone built up a little relationship as a group. I think it's just the amount of like, camaraderie that we have. I feel like, like this team has like the best culture, where everybody just feels comfortable with each other. We live together, we eat every meal together, we spend your days off together. You're not at home, you got no other loved ones here. Like, these guys are your loved ones here. Like, there's really, really small moments of genuine friendship that come out of this. Uh, this is Gary's first time seeing snow. What'd you think about it? Amazing, bro. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I love it. The relationships with the players, relationship with the staff, those are the things that are very, very important to me that really will bring a smile to my face. And when I look back on this time in many years in the future, those will be the, the things that stay with me. If I had the option, obviously I'd like to keep playing, but maybe I have to come to the reality that like maybe my playing days are done and maybe I have to like start coaching or something. But until then, I feel like I still have more to offer as a player. I want to mostly thank my mom, my sister, my girlfriend, you know, and even Edgar played a immense part of um, me just doing well this season. The real fans is like, I appreciate you guys. I thank you guys. I think, you know, you guys trust the process 
and still trusting us even though we lost. I've been away from my family for a long time right now. You guys have been supporting me to the best, always praying for me and even though it didn't turn out to be the best, you guys still will have faith in me and I would never want to break that faith and I hope if not today, then one day I'll give you what you guys have been giving me since childhood. I know it's hard when it doesn't show up on the results but I know you, all of you guys tried more or less to your best and I know you guys can push beyond so I don't know what the future holds but I wish you all the best of luck even in the future. I really hope whatever happens next, I hope 2025 will be a very good year for everybody supporting G. Thank you mama.